Hello, this is Jeremiah. Currently, I'm in the National Postal Museum. As you look around, you have this doing a roundabout. And that's the security scanner up ahead, maybe hard to see. And then these were the most fascinating that I've noticed. Anyways, stay tuned to more of my tours, I guess, if I do give any more. Um, currently, this is my friend Mitch. And these are all around, basically talking about how the post offices used to be, and going around once more. Yep. Thank you very much. This is the National Post Office Museum. Uh, this is where the post office started, right? Or no, this building used to be a post office. This building used to be a post office. You can kind of tell because there's a teller there. There'd be a teller over there. This is where you okay. write stuff, tables. Yeah, I think it's okay that I video record, right? Yeah. And post it on the internet, or? Oh yeah, it's a place open to the public. Yeah. Anyone can come. Ah, uh, we got an airplane up ahead. All the history of the post office. Yes. Oh, look at this. The Sonian Institution. It's not a dog on a travel website. You know how they tell you about two years. Something about this little dog. I don't know what it is. Mascot of the U.S. Post Office. Oh, that's what it is. Thank you. <laughs> uh, You can even get postal stamps in that store right there. Yeah. There's an actual post office in here, too, if you go back there. Nice. This is pretty cool. This is the cars of the post office uh, down the road. As of 2004, there were 188 613 delivery vehicles in the service in the United States. These white vehicles are common neighborhood sites. We watch and wait as carriers use them to help bring us to share over 600 million pieces. I think that's what it says, 600 million. 600000 yep. pieces of mail processed in the U.S. each day. The, the post office box should look familiar. Mailbox. Yep. Of course. One thing I don't like is when people diss the postal service. I'm like, think about it. For well, 42 cents. I agree, but the only thing is that they took forever once getting a letter to a friend of mine that I sent them in Ohio, but then again, they've. They were cutting back or something, yeah, at least only, in the city, I thought. Yeah, that I only it. happens once every how often? For, for it took them a month, but it was a pretty good deal, yeah. For 43 cents, you can send a letter anywhere in the U.S. and it'll usually get there within a few days. I agree. I think the Postal Service is one of the most efficient uses of the Yeah, US but people government. prefer emails, though. Well, That's now the they thing. do, but... I That's mean, why the Post have... Office is hurting. Well, yeah, but if you have to send packages and stuff, they're starting to special... Well, yeah. The mail will be delivered to your door free of charge by the Post Office. And each year, more and more cities would get free mail delivery. Of course, the mail is still to actually have to go to your local post office to pick stuff up. They didn't deliver to your... Wow. They didn't deliver to your house. But by the end of the 19th century, America's cities swelled, and the demand on the postal service increased. The post office unveiled new innovations. Streetcar mail this service. Is interesting. Underground pneumatic tubes. Letter boxes had to be bigger. I think people are going to like this video on YouTube. You know what I mean? To appear. <laughs> but the biggest it is a show court recording. Was the horseless carriage. It changed the way we it's carry people, automobile. and it revolutionized the way people carried the mail. Isn't this fascinating, though? 
And then uh, you look at all these people like in the 19, early 1900s or late 19, no, no, 1800s. Just so fascinating. Followed up with automobile tests of their own. But the car was in its infancy. And most roads were better suited for horses. Uh, and then you notice those cars, those wheels are like falling the off. Horseless carriage really carry the ever-growing volume of mail in America. Nowadays, everything's so automated. I mean, it's cheaper and more cost-effective. In the fall of But at the same time, Postmaster General Frank Hitchcock decided to find out. He ordered two Columbia Mark III touring cars to make test runs around Baltimore, Maryland. The result: an overwhelming success. The horse-drawn wagon's days were numbered at the post office. By 1912, 30 cities had adopted motor cars to carry the mail, or at least to Sometimes carry the mail. Sometimes it'd be cool man. if I lived back in, in, in those times, cities, you know. But then again, there's so much technology. Driven to their at least it's more convenient, you know. Imagine how long it would take back in the day. I know, like when you had a lot of politicians, it would take them at least several months just to get out to the state that they had to go to, you know, just to meet, you know, the other politicians or whatever. Horses take forever. Vehicles are better, even though I do like horses. But you can't even trust horses, too. I had one horse run me into a, a tree branch when it was in Colorado. Letter carriers had Colorado, two and a quarter million parcels. Right. In addition to the increasing now it's all automated. They were already carrying. The smaller so you look around in the other the exhibit. Yeah, a bit Soon the post office was using right. trucks. Yeah, I don't blame you. Because there's so much to see there. in these buildings. Exactly. Like there's a little bit of history over there. History over here. Sample mail car. This was mail by rail, apparently. Sorting mail on moving trains were one of the post off, postal op services' great innovations. After the Civil War, post office officials worked worked to decentralize operations, concentrating on the growing volume of mail carried on the nation's rail lines. Mailbags left untouched up on the rail car floors were now emptied in their contents processed as the train sped into its destination. This method of sorting mail in routes was developed just by railroads connecting every corner of the country. Yes, the only thing that's scary is that you could lose, you know, the mail, you know. Well, the thing is, with this, you may have seen, like, old Looney Tunes cartoons having to do with this, where they had the mailbag hanging out. Yeah, well, I just remember... And then as the train would go by, it would grab it. I just remember seeing, like, uh... uh sure, I, I just remember seeing the Wild Roadrunner, if that counts. Yeah, like, um, like that... See? Thing. Right there. Yeah, that thing, that the train would speed by, and it would grab the mailbag, and then leave another one at the same time. Nice. So literally... So they'd grab it. This is inside the train now. This is where they kept the mail, apparently. Beat the clock. And this is how it would be sorted. You basically had to beat the clock for sorting the mail. And it's like postal clerks to aboard mail cars are required to sort 600 pieces of mail an hour and were tested from time to time to be sure that they can maintain the pace. Can you sort 10 pieces of mail in one minute? Go to the Ford Education Center and play all board to sort the mail to find out. All board to sort the mail. Find the image on the main screen. This is fascinating. These are the mail bags, and then I guess this is apparently a dog. Let's see what this dog is. Oni, mascot of the rail service. So apparently this dog, in his day, Oni, about 1888 to 1897, was the most famous dog in America, celebrated for traveling the length of the breadth of the country on mail trains. His career began and followed some mailbags onto a train in Albany, New York. And after he never stopped moving, clerks working on the rail... Ray Mail Service cars loved having Oni on board and adopted him as the mascot. Reporters began to write about Oni in the early 1890s. He appeared in the headlines of San Francisco Call to the New York Times. Uh, at the time, most of the nation's mail was sorted and on, moved on trains. Railway accidents were common and clerks' jobs dangerous. Uh, clerks considered Oni a good luck charm because they believed that he's never been on a train wreck. To the mark Oni's trips on their trains, the clerk began adding medals and tags to his collar. 
apparently. Here's so. all the places he's been. Yeah, so. That's Oni the dog. He's huh? Been, he's he's been, been to all these different areas. Oh, wow. Oh, Baraboo. Wow. My hometown. <laughs> Obviously, D.C. Oh, yeah. really been anywhere around here. Yeah, but these states aren't very populated, though. It's, well, most of the population is either in the eastern part of the United oh, States time, or, yeah, in this, or in the western coastal front. Most of the time, especially. Notice there's a railroad map. There's no yeah. freeways on this map. Yeah, well, well exactly. No, uh, there weren't freeways back yet. in the day. This is the no, horse really carriage, and then this is to make your selection for the program. I guess this is Rex Robberies, the story of Oni and the mail by bus. And this, of course, we have now the future semi-truck. They look so cool. I guess so. Hello. <laughs> yes, right now we are going to semi-truck. I'm going to pretend I'm driving a semi-truck. Yeah. Beep, beep. I See if this beeps. No one's not gonna beep. You think they're really gonna let it beep? Group. Well, I'm in a semi truck. Wee. Okay. Um, oh, you know what reminds me of the Cat in the Hat, where you have the uh, two wheels. Did you see that movie? The Cat in the Hat. Oh my God! It's like yeah, thing one and thing two, and they all got wheels. It's like we can all drive. It's impossible to have three people drive at once. With Having three steering wheels. I guess so. This is pretty much the most the railroad museum. I guess uh, unless you want to unless you want to check specific exhibits. But I think there's more buildings to see. Anyways, this is Jeremiah reporting live at the National Railway Museum. Sorry, the National Post Office Museum. My apologies. I've never been here before. There's no National Railway Museum. But, but you know the what? National Post Office Museum, to so all you postmen and women out there, and boys and girls and children of all ages. You know Bye for now. To, um, this will give you an incentive to come back here. And yeah. Oh, out. and now we have a statue up ahead really quickly before I turn this video off. Let's go look at the statue and see what the statue ben has. Franklin. Ben Franklin? I think it's Franklin. Pretty sure. But, um, and this? It is. It's Franklin. Franklin, how do you know? Okay, let's read Ben Franklin really quickly. And this is the post office service shall have its basic function of the obligation to provide postal services to the blind and the nation together through the personal education, uh, literacy, and business correspondence of the people. Postal Reorganization Act, 1971. And then you got the statue. Ben Franklin. He was basically printer, journalist, diplomat, statesman, philosopher, and father of the Postal Service in the United States, born in Boston, Massachusetts, January 17, 1706, died Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, April 17, 1790, postmaster general for the, uh, for the colonial North America under the British crown, 1755 to 1774, William Zora. He's a sculptor. Sculptor. And it says that on loan from the General Service Administration Fine Arts Program. So this is Benjamin Franklin. Hey, Benny. I love you to death. Was he president? Some, no, was he? No, no, he was never president. I heard of him before. Who was this guy? I'm bad with Franklin, history. Um, the experiment with the key and the kite. Oh, yes, the key and the kite. And then he found out that lightning storms actually have electricity. Well, anyways, this is Jeremiah calling out. Bye for now. And then you got the payphones, believe it or not. I thought pay phones were obsolete. Oh, we're going on floor two, or? Well, we're going back upstairs to get out. Oh, okay. Well, this is the end of the tour for today. Bye for now.